Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy and the latest news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Stocks were mixed yesterday, with the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ going upwards, however the Dow Jones actually dropped in their share price, and one reason for this could be that investors are looking forward to key inflation data later this week, and some investors don't think that it's going to be good news, and that's why the Dow is dropping. However, we do have a company named Viking Therapeutics, which recently surged by 121% in their share price, up to $85.05 per share. So let's talk about why that is. Recently, Viking Therapeutics reported positive results for a recent weight loss pharmaceutical, which is breaking into a sector which is normally dominated by both Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk. Therefore, this is fantastic news for Viking Therapeutics, and I anticipate that there will be further upside in this company. But since they've already surged over 100% in their share price, a pullback will be imminent for this share price. So please be aware of that, and always make sure to do your own research before investing into any of these companies in the video. Next up, let's talk about Wendy's, which is a fast food chain, which also has stock on the public stock market. And recently, they had an announcement where they will have quote-unquote dynamic pricing. So what does this mean? For context, compared to other fast food joints, Wendy's actually has rather expensive products, and recently they are introducing dynamic pricing, which means their prices are going to be determined based upon supply and demand and the time of day it is. So literally the same item throughout the day will fluctuate in its price, and it also depends on what day of the week it is and what time of the year it's going to be. So this is going to be a very interesting development for Wendy's, and I personally don't think it's going to work out for them. The CEO recently revealed that this company will spend around $20 million through the end of 2025 to install digital menu boards so that this dynamic pricing can actually take place. Due to dynamic pricing, that means food items on their menu will be more expensive around lunchtime, which is normally when they receive the most business. The reason I don't think this is going to work for them is because there are other fast food chains that people will gravitate towards, especially if Wendy's decides to do this. Now, on the other hand, if this is successful, then Wendy's top and bottom line will benefit greatly. However, again, I don't think this is going to work out for Wendy's, which will negatively impact their overall share price, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Next, let's talk about Macy's, which is closing 150 stores, while they also simultaneously give themselves a makeover. As of right now, Macy's is closing stores, while they pivot towards selling more luxury items to boost their sales, because in luxury items, the margins are much more enticing. The reason why Macy's is doing this is because their business is failing, and that's why their stock price dropped by 75% ever since its peak in 2015. I I personally am not investing into Macy's, but I am also not shorting this company, but I would love to hear your thoughts if you are buying into Macy's or if you have shorted this company recently. Next up, in huge news, we have Warner Bros. Discovery breaking off their merger talks with Paramount Global. Originally, this merger was going to be huge, with Warner Bros. Discovery merging with Paramount to give competition to rivals such as Netflix and Disney. But recently, the executives over at Warner Bros. decided to cut ties and not pursue this merger anymore, which is going to negatively impact impact the stock prices of these companies. In other news, yesterday we talked about the Apple car and how Apple is abandoning their idea of an Apple electric vehicle. Instead, they are shifting the 2,000 employees that were working on this project over to a new AI project. And honestly, I think this is good news because Apple was going to sell their vehicle for around $100,000, but the competition in the EV space is just too fierce for any new competition. Therefore, I actually view this as a positive in regards to Apple and their general share price. So I would to hear your thoughts about this down below. But that's not all, because we also have a few other news stories that you need to be aware of, including IPO news. For companies that are coming to the public stock market, we have Sheen, which has recently reported that they are considering switching from the New York Stock Exchange over to the London Stock Exchange. If you didn't know, Sheen is a fashion company, and they have recently met resistance from US regulators. On the other hand, the Swedish fintech company named Klarna is moving towards its US IPO to where it's valued at $20 billion. So definitely keep an eye out for these companies, because when they go public, they could receive a lot of momentum initially. But also remember that IPOs 
news are extremely risky, so always make sure to do your own research. In other news, Chevron said that its $53 billion deal to buy Hess could be in jeopardy due to ExxonMobil and China's CNOOC challenging this acquisition. However, I am trading off of this volatility because if this acquisition goes through, that means Chevron stock is going to explode. However, if it doesn't go through, that means Exxon and mobile stock will surge. So I am waiting and I am biding my time to determine when is going to be the best time to invest into either of these companies. You should also know, as of the last two years, 401k balances have reached their highest levels according to Fidelity. So congratulations for those of you who are consistently investing into your 401ks. Great job and keep up the great work. In other news, investors need to be paying attention to cruise stocks. After Norwegian Cruise Line reported their first annual profit since 2019, and this lifted the share prices of other cruise stocks such as Carnival and Royal Caribbean. You should also know that Carnival and Royal Caribbean have enjoyed record high bookings lately, so we could see a huge comeback and rebound in regards to cruise stocks, so please make sure to do your own research because this could be a very lucrative opportunity. Next up, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite companies, which is SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, and this is a fintech company that essentially operates as a digital bank. As of late, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest has been acquiring more shares of SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, ticker name SoFi. So now we're going to talk about whether or not you should accumulate more shares of SoFi. The first thing I want to bring to your attention is that the CEO of SoFi Technologies named Anthony Noto actually spoke directly with Kathy Wood, and he absolutely loves SoFi Technologies, and he himself continuously buys into this company. So it's great to see how a CEO of a company is consistently investing into the company in which he operates. According to the CEO, SoFi is not only a attracting mass affluent high earners, but they are also going after the unfulfilled space by being a one-stop shop to provide everything somebody needs in terms of their finances. Essentially, SoFi's digital finance app gives anyone anything they could possibly need in terms of financial services and financial products, all through an easy-to-use interface. But I haven't even gotten to the best part, because SoFi has shown continuous growth in their market growth rates, their revenue, and their earnings. SoFi Technologies continues to capture market share from both with other fintech companies and traditional banks. That means this company demonstrates just how valuable they actually are. SoFi Technologies is also pretty diversified in their revenues because they have three main revenue segments to where the first one is their lending products segment, their second would be their financial services segment, and lastly they have their technology platform. I absolutely love how this company is diversified in the revenue streams and I believe the future of this company is extremely bright. You should also know that this company actually became profitable with $48 million in net income off of $615 million worth of revenue. So this is actually a profitable fintech company which is growing at a very aggressive rate and that's why I think investors need to be paying attention to this company. This is also one of the reasons why Kathy Wood of ARK Invest is acquiring more shares of SoFi to add it to her two ETFs which would be the ARK Innovation Fund ETF and the ARK Fintech Innovation Fund ETF. However, you should be aware that this company popped after the company became profitable and now they are downtrending in their share price. In my opinion, I think this is a great opportunity to buy the shares right now, especially if you are a forward-looking investor. And with patience over time, this company could receive a lot of value, making it a great buying opportunity right now if you are a long-term investor. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about SoFi Technologies. Speaking about fintech companies, let's talk about another company that has experienced explosive growth in the fintech space, and that would be none other than New Holdings, ticker symbol NU. Both SoFi Technologies and New Holdings are trading under $10 per share. So these shares are relatively cheap and that's why I encourage investors to look further into these companies because to me, these are phenomenal buying opportunities right now. As of right now, New Holdings serves customers in Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia and they are growing their customer base at an extremely rapid pace. They have literally grown their customers from around 20 million back in 2020 to 95 million customers as of January 2024. So that is a crazy growth rate. The best part is that this company is digital and they are a fintech company, so customers don't need to go to physical branches and instead, they can operate their finances completely online and digitally. This company provides services which would include digital accounts, payments, credit cards, debit cards, business credit, investments, and insurance products. However, you should be aware 
that the competition is absolutely fierce in the fintech space, especially since New Holdings is experiencing competition from Mercado Libre, which I also hold in my personal portfolio. However, let me tell you that there is plenty of market share to go around for everybody, so both New Holdings and Mercado Libre could both be winners, and that's why I personally hold them both in my portfolio. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below about New Holdings as well as Mercado Libre, because in my opinion, these are phenomenal investments to buy literally right now, especially if you are a long-term investor. Speaking about finances, let's quickly talk about cryptocurrencies in regards to Bitcoin and how they surged on Wednesday to break above $60,000, which has put them within striking distance of their all-time highs. The price of Bitcoin BTC, which is a digital asset, is up around 19% on the week, and it's also up 43% so far this year. The reason behind this recent momentum is due to the recently released spot Bitcoin ETFs, which is causing money to pour into this asset. However, in my opinion, the news gets even better, because although Bitcoin is trading close to their all-time high, some analysts believe that this company could surge up to $125,000 from now until 2025, so I'm very excited for this. You should also know that Ethereum has actually outperformed Bitcoin by around 4% in regards to price appreciation. On top of that, you should also know that the value for all crypto assets is up around 36%, up to $2.24 trillion according to CoinMarketCap. But what does this have to do with stocks? Well, let me tell you. The recent activity has caused a big boom for companies like Coinbase Global as well as Robinhood. On both of these platforms, you can buy, trade, and sell cryptocurrencies. And as of right now, their stocks are up around 27% and 31% respectively since the beginning of the year. But that's not all, because we also see Marathon Digital, which is a Bitcoin mining company, and MicroStrategy, which is a Bitcoin holding company, also increase in their share prices, because they have risen by around 32% and 27% respectively over the same period since the beginning of the year. As of right now, MicroStrategy recently acquired an additional 3,000 BTC to their portfolio. To now, it brings their total investment to 193,000 Bitcoin. And when we translate that over to their current price, that means that this company has around $11 billion worth of Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Bitcoin, Ethereum, Coinbase Global, Robinhood, Marathon Digital, and a MicroStrategy. Next up, let's talk about another stock that I absolutely love, and that would be none other than ASML. If you didn't know, ASML is a Netherlands-based semiconductor equipment manufacturer, and recently they achieved a huge milestone. According to the article, they achieved quote-unquote first first light on its new high NA EUV lithography system, according to Reuters. And this milestone means that the tool is functioning, but it's not at its full performance. But either way, this is a great catalyst for ASML stock. For some background information, lithography systems use focused light beams to help create the small circuitry of computer chips. And thanks to the momentum from artificial intelligence, ASML should increase in their general share price, which is very exciting news for investors. This tool from ASML literally costs over $350 million each, and it's anticipated to help enable new generations of smaller, faster chips. Therefore, this is a very positive catalyst for ASML stock, and I personally hold them in my portfolio, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about another one of my favorite technology companies, which is Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. According to Bank of America, they see strong demand and a refresh cycle for Apple's iPhones over the next few years, and this is partially being fueled by artificial intelligence. According to a smartphone survey, which was issued in February of 2024, 41% of respondents over in the United States, the United Kingdom, China, and India have indicated that they plan to upgrade or do upgrade their phone once every four years. This means that Apple is anticipated to receive strong demand inflows over the next few years as people want to upgrade their phones. According to the Bank of America analyst, he says, we believe the installed base is due for an upgrade and anticipate a strong strong refresh cycle to take place over the next two years as generative artificial intelligence features start to take hold on smartphones. And this is why he gives Apple a $225 price target. On top of that, he also said that customer loyalty for Apple remains strong, with 57% of current iPhone users intending to buy an iPhone during their next upgrade, which is very positive when we compare Apple to other companies like Samsung and Huawei, to where their customers only want to stick with this company 55% of the time 
time or 43% of the time. So this gives Apple a huge advantage, especially in regards to iPhone upgrades or just phone upgrades in general. Lastly, let's talk about the four stocks that you need to be watching right now. Starting off with TJX, which is a company known as TJ Maxx, and they are a retailer of home goods. Recently, shares of TJX has reversed course to where their margins lowered in pre-market trading. The reason we know this is because recently they released their financial report, and that's where we saw their sales increase by 5% year over year, which beat estimates, because analysts believe that this company would only increase their sales by 4.1%. This sales growth was primarily driven by customer transactions during the holiday quarter, so overall, I think this is a mixed bag for TJX stock, but for me personally, I do not invest into this company. Next up, let's talk about HP, ticker symbol HPQ, and this company is a PC and a printer maker. As of right now, they plan to release finance results after the market closes, to where Wall Street is expecting HPQ to earn 81 cents per share and revenue of $13.59 billion. So if they beat these estimates, the share price is going to go up, and if they disappoint on estimates, the share price will most likely go down. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about HP. Lastly, let's talk about another company which is named Salesforce, ticker symbol CRM, which is a cloud-based software firm. They plan to release their financial results in extended trading hours. To where Wall Street expects this company to post $2.27 per share on revenues of $9.22 billion. Overall, I am very excited for this company because I believe they will beat on both their earnings per share and revenue, which will cause their CRM share price to increase, but only time will tell. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.